Hello, this is a review of The Fourth Turning, what the cycles of history tell us about America's next rendezvous with Destiny by William Strauss and Neil Howe. Not too old of a book. It was published in 1997, about 20 years ago. And it's a book about cycles. And while you're listening to this, I want you to pull up the two articles that I have saved in the comment section, just so I don't have to put it on the screen itself. In general, I don't like to read history books because mostly everything is the art of the story. Some of these history books have fake news or fake history attached to them. Some of the books that I do recommend are Guns, Germs, and Steel, A People's History of the United States, and of course, Sapiens, due to the story itself, which will even help you understand why I don't really review history books or even read them. A turning is a social mood that changes. And obviously by the title, it means the fourth turning, which is a crisis. So the first, second, third, and fourth would be in the order of a high, an awakening, an unraveling, and a crisis right at the end. Also in the book, you tries to put sequences and characteristics of certain times and the people as individuals in the terms of the archetypes, heroes, prophets, artists, and nomad. What is the fourth turning? It's a crisis that scares and there's going to be hard times. Some examples would be 1776, the Civil War, and as a worldly view, as in not so much post-war, but a crisis that happens where it creates this cycle of the four turnings. Some other examples would be the Great Depression, the World War II, which is the cycle we are on now, which you see the baby boomers coming and rising with the economy flexing good times, and they had the best family generational and then during this past 30, 40 years, we have the Gen X, which is the 13th generation. He, he calls them 13ers and the millennials who are in this somewhat last cycle, it looks like. And a new word that I found out is seculum. It compromises history, seasonal rhythm of growth, maturation, entropy, and destruction. And first, I want to go through what I disliked and like about this book. So what I disliked is some of the overuse of the nomad, prophet, artist, hero can get really technical jargon where it's just too much and it can create rational, rational cycles. And it's very hard to nitpick what he says. And some of the graphs and diagrams, especially if you look at the links that I have attached, it can be a little bit confusing even after the fact. But at least you have a gist of what he's talking about and trying to put things and pigeonhole things into a certain way. And it can be hard to understand however poetic and creative it could be. The explanation is very vague. And the prophet is used so much that it can be really confusing about what it really means. What does this prophet, these type of leaders, some type of vision comes out of the crisis? And I found it very confusing. Also, he mentions Generation X, which is the 13ers. It, it's hard to, uh, maybe he just wanted to call it that, but typically everybody knows this Gen X, the 13th generation. Also, some politicians will use this book for tactics. Some likes about this book is it incorporates ancient wisdom. I found this book to be a must read and something modern people will fail to ignore that this book is very organized and well researched. Even if it's somewhat confusing, you could read this a few times and ping off some of the great quotes people said and some of the eras that we don't understand. You could read other books that will help you understand some of these dark times as well as the boom times. And it reminds me of Robert Greene's books. It took a ton of time to write this book. Also, you can learn how, especially during the unraveling time, that you can tech can be control things and delay the cycles or even mask them because we don't want to know that the, a crisis is coming. The storm touch a surge, the unraveling, then the crisis will come. I do like that this book is not about facts and opinions and not put things as a post-war like many other books. It has some depth to it. There's a sentiment, there's a season, and understand things into a circular fashion. Some of the other ways, the old ancient ways, whether it be Native American, whether they be Greek, that we didn't have all these facts and all this information. We understand things through a cycle, a circle, not just a linear way. And it incorporates nature, and there's no lines in nature. It's very hard to understand that. And there's an awakening just like the sleeping elephant. And this book in general is great for Americans to read, as well as anyone interested in America and how it regenerates itself. And the most important thing I think for people to understand and to remember, hammer in, is things come in cycles, a circular fashion. There is no linear logical way. And here's a good quote to understand things, how everybody's connected. This kid and grandma quote. In other words, likened to be like Mike. And some of the cycles that can happen during your own life is the childhood to adulthood to middle age and to old geriatric. <laughs> and there's a child to an adult. There's a ripening, a farming up, and to pass on that old wisdom, helping out the next generation. 
as these two have written a generation book as well. Remember, there's a high, an awakening, an unraveling, and then a crisis. And some of these, when you go outside and not just stay out in the city, you'll understand things too as a tides, um, an ebb and flow of the tides, a seasonal factor, a seasonal mood that captures these historical times, brought these moods of almost like optimism or pessimism or a bull versus bear. And I found the most important generation to really research is the baby boomer generation, the good times that happened. There's quite a big section on the boomer era as well as the generation X and the millennial generation. And of course, this book was written in 1997, so it didn't really know about what's happened in the past 20 years. And it somewhat doesn't matter what he predicts, it matters that this generation is studied and you can have the self-awareness to look at your yourself and your generation by expanding your mind by not so much reading, but traveling and understanding and connecting with other people. So this boomer generation is the second turning from 1964 to 84. So they had the JFK death, the Berkeley free speech movement. There was a calm of understanding and respect. They had long hair coming out. The tech industry was booming. There was the moon landing, the Woodstock, very interesting era and very upswing era. Other than they had some of the assassinations with MLK and some of the Kennedys, as well as the Vietnam War, which kind of set up a different type of hippie era, especially affects me because I'm from the Bay Area. And I do like to study, especially people that are older, not so much the silent generation or people that went to war, but to connect with people because the human condition doesn't change. All right, we're pretty much in my era. So this is the 1984 to 2005 and these next eight years that he wanted to predict that these are like the culture wars, the unraveling. Pretty decent era to be a part of. There was, you know, pretty good business. There was debt, there's shadow baking, there's leverage debt with the 2008 crisis, the financial crisis. And there could be shallow actions, inconspicuous consumption. And you can see that some people are sick of feminism and as well as just rights in general, because these are some of these rights can be privileges. It's a very vague mystery in time. One of these quotes is a stay at home moms begin wearing buttons that read stop at one. None is fun. And Jesus was an only child. The reasons for this sudden turn included birth control pills and ascent feminism and a new society wide hostility toward children. And you see the sentence like you, you, the future is children and now you can see some of the unraveling that is happening where kids are not really cared for or it's not a priority. People are into their own world, almost, almost abandonment. And also I think technology has really changed this generation with the phone. It's insane how everything's connected yet not connected as well as the time to save and how everything maxes out the Moore's law and how tech can like 40 times itself. The speed of light as, as well as subtle communication and this next section is more of a manosphere section because after reading this book you can see how feminism has like an up cycle during some of these times especially the awakening era where you'll have utopia and civic ideals you will have the institutions be more important than the individuals where they're very trustworthy they run their course and you can see some of the college ed educated females of the generation a cycle of doom and gloom it, it, it changes the sentiment like what's important having a baby and kid or trying to get degrees and having your career being super important and you can see during certain times and it explains in this book some of the feminist movements that it kind of worked itself even more they grab more and more rights more and more energy and then it slows down after the crisis because when a crisis hits, it's really almost survival that's going to happen. In other words, you see the nomad to really shine. One of the archetypes. You're not a hero. You're a nomad. The males become nomads. Because if they do choose that independent lifestyle, then they're going to be that small minority that will have that independence. And will understand that versus everybody else around them. That you'll see a death of the old corrupt establishment, which you see institutions not being trustworthy. We're going to create our own or they suddenly become corrupt. The building ages and it becomes just something that wants to survive where the small and mobile tribes, the small and mobile businesses will thrive. The truth will go into those. And hopefully you do the work and read it yourself. I know not all my readers uh, read the books and just maybe just listen to reviews. And here's a good quote about how now families aren't really important. There's no family formation. There's a killings, uh, lack of fathers. They promote the gay and transgender lifestyle versus the masculinity and virtues itself. Of course, attached with vices as well. And as noted earlier, you'll see children being hated. 
even though children are the future, as you see in the cycle, that old wisdom is that is in that quote that I showed earlier, how the generations pass on. And it's obvious I've taken a direct path that the nomad is revealing it's a distrust in institutions. You go it alone, you don't care about me. I'm going to do my own thing, as you'll see many other males in certain areas taking this type of lifestyle and it's individualism from the corrupt institutions that were once good. And then once this crisis is over, when the storm surge happens and the crisis ends, there will be the heroes to rise up. And then it will create more of a, not individuals, but people don't really care about being individuals if they could be it themselves or they're not being attacked where they have to isolate themselves from dangers. That's when these institutions, this teamwork, and it will include everybody to rebuild because it got well, in other words, shit hits the fan. So during after the crisis, we have nowhere else to go but up if we work together. And understand it's a group of individuals versus the mob or clown world. As well as chaos is coming, as you can see, the dynamic of the Tao Te Ching is chaos and order. And it's coming and it's welcoming. And to understand generations are connected, there's a seasons and there's a cycle. After the crisis, we will truly work together. There's no worries. It's it's just going to be nomadic, artistic creators in the forefront. And will you prepare for the storm shirts coming towards you? Let me know in the comments below. The, the crisis is a natural event. And thanks for listening.